Good afternoon. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Not the uh, best of circumstances of uh, St. Patrick's Day that we've experienced, uh, but I would encourage people to uh, try to find a way to enjoy this day, uh, but do it, at, do it at your homes. We need to be practicing the uh, distancing ourselves from people. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here to, to cover this today to make sure we keep our citizens informed. Uh, we are in very serious times. Uh, our country has experienced many significant and serious times uh, over our history, uh, from the Great Depression to World War II. Uh, I remember exactly where I was when I heard about 9-11. And uh, our kids and our grandkids uh, will look back on this moment in time and judge us by how we as leaders and adults act at this moment in time. I simply want to communicate the facts and the data to the people of Jacksonville. So what we're doing, what we have to do is to make sure everybody's safe. And everybody's going to have to play a part in that, which includes social distancing and trying to work from home when you can and many of the other things that we've suggested. To increase protection today, Governor Ron DeSantis announced that effective at 5 p.m., all bars and nightclubs will close for 30 days throughout the state of Florida. The governor's all, governor is also implementing a 50 percent capacity limit for restaurants and asking them to space out their diners with staggered seating. In addition, the governor has ordered those groups at public beaches contain no more than 10 people and that they distance themselves from other parties by at least six feet. Yesterday, I took the action to limit large crowds to a maximum of 50 occupants at recreational and social gathering establishments. The governor has given discretion to local municipalities to enact tougher guidelines, and yesterday I did. There's been some confusion as to what establishments my restrictions affect, so let me be clear. If you operate a socially driven business or organization, restaurants, churches, gyms, arcades, non-essential shopping, movie theaters, coffee shops, you have a maximum occupancy of 50 people at a time. I know these are tough circumstances, incredibly tough circumstances for a lot of people, and they're going to be awful for the bottom line, for citizens, for businesses, and for families. We're making these incredibly difficult decisions based on official health expert guidelines to protect people and prevent the spread of this disease. These decisions will save lives. This limit also applies to social and professional gatherings, including conventions, large meetings, weddings, and any other large social gathering of people. We ask that you please reduce the number of attendees or reschedule or cancel your event. We know, again, know this is incredibly painful, incredibly disruptive, uh, economic disaster for many. We have to put the people of our city and their lives first. When and where it's possible, we encourage citizens to take advantage of takeout and delivery options from our local restaurants and businesses. My team is continuing to work with state, federal, and other partners on resources for those who need assistance. Today, I'm also asking residential and commercial landlords to please halt all evictions during this crisis. Many in our community are going to be economically impacted by this crisis. We need to be patient, show compassion, and work with tenants to, pre pre to prevent future hardship. As I mentioned in my opening remarks, our kids are watching. This is a time we must all come together and be that idea that is one city, one Jacksonville. Our teams are currently working with federal partners to implement testing location at TIA Bank Field. In addition, we're working on a city-sponsored drive-through testing location that we're planning to have operational by the end of the week. So that will be two additional testing sites. We'll have more information on these future updates as details are available. However, I can tell you today that when a city-sponsored location is implemented, it will require a process of making an appointment before you go to the testing location. The appointments will be facilitated online or phone-based apps, and it will only be for Duval County residents. But again, more specific details will be rolled out in the days ahead. As a reminder, while Duval County Public Schools are out this week, Meals are being provided for school-aged children. They can be picked up at any traditional public school weekdays between 11 and 1. 
Students must be present to receive the lunch and the snack. Regarding our homeless populations and, their ser and services, my administration has been working with community partners to align and coordinate efforts to respond to the unique needs of some of the most vulnerable citizens. We are working with local partners to coordinate additional resources such as, meal resources such as meals, hotel, hotel stays, and medications. Our homeless shelters are well trained to manage infectious disease containment and are working with the Department of Health to guide responses on specific cases. All shelters are implementing safety precautions such as social distancing and reverse isolation in a shelter setting. The shelters are working collaboratively to align resources and ensure coordinated intake is inclusive of the monitoring of the ongoing health of their clients. We encourage local hotels and motels to be flexible with their current residential guests who may be experiencing an unplanned hardship in order to prevent an increase in demand on local shelters. The election is proceeding as planned today in Duval County. My administration is in frequent contact with the supervisor of elections. Uh, we are not aware of any issues. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Supervisor Mike Hogan for his work there. I voted today. They presented me with hand sanitizer and wipes, and when I was walking out, they reminded me to do it again. In conclusion, I want to end where I started. This is a critical moment for Jacksonville, the state of Florida, the country, and frankly, the world. We must stand united and do our part to answer this call so we keep everybody safe and we come out of this crisis together. I'm sure you've all seen there's a Fred Rogers quote circulating on social media lately saying, look for the helpers. Jacksonville, it's time for us to be helpers, each and every one of us. Help your neighbors, help your friends, and play your part in social distancing. With that, I'll invite our director, our sheriff, and our chief up, and we'll take questions. So, uh, the, the, yeah. So my executive order is uh, no more than 50 people in a restaurant uh, or bar. And the governor's is 50% occupancy. So people are expected to follow the most stringent one, as the governor has left it up to count individual counties. So if, you're, if your occupancy is 100, uh, and you take 50% of that, that's 50, which would also comply with my order. If your occupancy is 50, uh, under the governor's order, you're at 25. So you go to the most stringent of the two. Uh, in terms of defining bars, uh, I, I believe that's based on, uh, we, can get, we can get you guys the information because it's based on what percentage of revenue comes from food or alcohol. And, uh, but I also believe under the governor's order, he has eliminated all alcohol sales in establishments, too. As far as we know, even if they're restaurants, you can't be social. We'll have to, we'll get clarification on the governor's order, but that's my understanding. No. And, and I would add, maybe the sheriff would want to add to this, under the governor's executive order, uh, if you a violation of his executive order is actually a crime. So in, in terms of uh, enforcement, if you read the governor's executive order, the lead enforcement agency is the Department of Business and Professional Regulation, so it's a business regulation issue. Uh, we obviously have the lawful ability under the executive order to assist in that, and, and so we, we are taking that posture that we will help when called upon. So. Um, but yeah, I think that, that answers that part of the question. Picking up part of the question, is there a staff out for that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I don't know, does anyone in my administration have clarification on the, it's no alcohol in restaurants? As we know, the mayor, the, gov the governor's order talks about percentage of justification that is the governor's meeting of the executive order. 
concern about private events. Yeah. That no weddings or gatherings or bad acts like we're hearing the club is saying, hey, we're private. We don't have to follow that. We just leave them. Yes. Uh, we have, uh, you're talking about in like private, uh, non-licensed? Yeah. Um, well, that's my steward saying, no, we're not canceling weddings. Sheriff, you want to speak to? So I, I'll tell you this, you know, at some point in time, we will have done all we can do, and it's up to the, at that point, the community to step up um, and, and adhere to the mayor's executive order, the governor's executive order, the orders coming out of Washington, D.C. Uh, so there needs to be a little social responsibility at some point. We understand people that need to make money. Uh, we all get that. Everybody's going to be impacted by that. But at the end of the day, what's best for the community? And if what's best for the community is closing that facility or not having that, that wedding, let's do that. And so, you know, we, we, you know you're not going to see police officers crashing in to close a wedding at the end of the day. But, again, take some responsibility as a member of our community to not facilitate the spread of this virus that you know we're working so hard to contain. So uh, again, we we're almost at the point where the community is the last step, and they've got to step up and and do what's really been asked. Look, I, I understand the economic hardship, uh, the fear some people are having and experiencing. Uh, you know, people have built their lives around their small businesses, and they rely on that. And that's why these decisions were really hard to make. But when you look at what's happened in other places, this is a very real possibility if we don't take these precautions. Someone's at a large wedding. Um, the virus spreads around to a number of people that maybe are never symptomatic or they don't get very ill. It, however, spreads to an at-risk person because of their age or immune system. It then spreads to other people that are high risk. And so you suddenly have a rush on hospitals with the most vulnerable. All the beds are full. The emergency rooms are full. Diabetics, people with heart disease, people that need medical care on a recurring basis can't get it. And the entire system begins to fall apart, and the entire population begins to fall apart. This is what we're trying to prevent here. And for people to suggest that can't happen, it's happening elsewhere. We consider those to be social gatherings, so we would expect that they would be complying. They should comply with the my order. In the private schools and cultural gatherings and schools like that, uh, we're getting calls from saying you can't. That's that's considered a social gathering. Well, I, look, I'll say I got takeout last night, and um, yeah, there were not many people in the restaurant. Uh, but those that were there, the owner shared with me, they had took, taken it upon themselves. The people that were there, they had already spread them out in a way that was much more than six feet of distance. Uh, I'm told anecdotally from mayors at the beaches that they were seeing the same thing, that people uh, were, were taking, by and large, uh, people are listening to us and taking this seriously. So some of that could be civil penalties and fines. And again, as the Department of Business and Professional Regulation takes the lead in, in enforcing some of the governor's restrictions, uh, they'll have to establish that process. I'm sure they have a ticketing process. You could lose your license. Uh, there could be fines. There could be a lot of things that happen uh, to negatively impact your business moving forward. So again, Department of Professional Regulation at the state level, not sure how they're going to address that. Uh, but they'll have to, you know, uh, be the ones to take the lead on those type of uh, activities. So whether or not they're taking calls or, you know, patrolling, I'm not sure at this point. Um, I know people have had some trouble getting through the health department, from what I've heard, long waits. Uh, we believe uh, our, we're adding testing capabilities with the ability to do a virtual assessment on an app. Uh, and other hospitals are doing that as well, so that should alleviate that in the days ahead. I believe St. Vincent's has already stood one up, or is standing one up. We're working and standing one up with another group, and 
the federal government's bringing one here as well. Um, I, I haven't talked to them about supplies. I have talked to them big picture. Again, today I made a number of phone calls. Are they feeling the kind of the patient stress? Uh, that's my first concern. I, you know, that's where the system gets overwhelmed. Uh, as of hours ago, I w was not made aware of any of that, uh, and that's we're doing what we're doing now to prevent that from happening. Oh yeah, uh, we're in constant contact with the uh, healthcare system, and obviously the goal of trying to slow down the disease is to make sure that we don't exceed the capacity of our hospital system. And some are looking ahead to what may be the type of patient load that they have, and we're working with them to look at respirators and other essentials. So. I think that's an important point because they're, they're telling me that as well. While, while the excessive demand isn't happening, they're doing the responsible thing, which you would expect them to do, and they're planning for that. We have uh, some of the best health systems in Duval County, uh, physicians, leadership, and uh, uh, the phone calls I've been on with them in this crisis and even knowing them before, uh, they're, they're prepared. They're preparing and they're prepared. The health department has not given me that number. We'll have, uh, they'll have professionals set up, obviously, with proper, yes. No. Do we know the number of cases locally? Has that changed? Uh, and do we know more about how it is spreading? The official number from the Department of Health is six cases confirmed in Duval County as of this time. That obviously uh, is something that will change based on their reporting schedule. And obviously the disease, uh, there have been multiple patients from one of the sites where another case had uh, had resided. So. We're tracking those clusters closely and working with those facilities to uh, do everything that can be done to stop the spread. Can you tell us about those clusters and who's the area and what do you mean by that? Uh, we're not allowed uh, because of uh, state guidelines and state laws to discuss specific addresses, specific locations. But I mean, is it like a healthcare facility or is it a, a neighborhood or you know, can you give us any indication? So obviously, if there were four people from one facility, it's not a single family home, it's it's a facility that does deal with, uh, with so uh, facility, that's what I'm saying. So correct. And is it being transmitted communally or do they all travel one area or how is that? Well, we don't have details. Department of Health. Yeah, we, uh, we, haven't, we haven't shared that with them. I understand those are separate cases. Uh, we do not have those details. There's no information. Well, there's obviously a lot of information, and we're working really hard to share that with the community and with the press. But uh, you know, it becomes available to us. Uh, the lead agency is the Florida Department of Health and Health and Human Services at the federal level. Any information about the courthouse still open, correct? Yes. Are you guys going to restrict it at all? The court system has a number of guidelines they should have put out to the press already. For the most part, their actions have been dramatically curtailed. Uh, they're looking at some remote uh, first appearance technology for upcoming uh, caseload. It's not going to be closed, but they're already working to dramatically restrict the amount of flow through the building. Can you guys do uh, my people member of my administration will be organizing it with, at the federal site with federal partners and at uh, the city the site we're going to partner in with uh, local hospital officials. Last question. Can you tell us, I mean, just what you want people right now to do? Stay home? What? You know? To the extent that they can, stay home. 
and if they're in public, social distance, six feet or more. Um, wash their hands, don't touch their face, uh, coughing, sneezing, uh, cover it. Uh, if you have any symptoms, if you're sick and it's not even these symptoms, just stay home. I mean, don't go to work, don't go, don't go around people. Um, and uh, it's just take care of each other. And as I told you days ago, Jim, and I'll say again, as we have information, we will share that information with you so the public knows what we know. Thank you.